Bibles, hallelujah, to Zechariah, the fourth chapter. Glory to God, hallelujah. We are, we're just so blessed to be here with you. We're blessed to walk in the power of God and the blessings of God. We're blessed that Jesus is our Lord, hallelujah. Thank God he was raised from the dead, glory to God. He overcame, hallelujah. He defeated and conquered Satan, glory to God. Can you say amen? Now, I'm not quite the Easter Sunday. We always like to preach, you know, you know, some resurrection service on Sunday. But you know what? You can't. You, I live resurrection Sunday every day. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have to wait till you know till uh, you know, resurrection Sunday to be able to go when Jesus was raised up. Hallelujah. I live every day by faith and every day in victory because He was raised up. Hallelujah. For our justification, glory to God. He conquered Satan. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So Zechariah chapter four. Um. Uh, we'll just start in verse 1. How about that? And the angel that talked with me came again and walked me and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I looked, and behold, a candlestick up of gold and the bowl and the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other to the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? The angel said, that talked with me answered and said to these, unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. I want to talk to you this morning about uh, the fact that we walk in the power of the Spirit of God. Can you say amen? That we cannot discount, we cannot lay aside, we cannot forget the importance of the power of the Holy Ghost in our life. Amen? Now, it's easy to get caught up with, with being a Christian and going through the processes, having all the different things that we you know we're told to do, you know, and have all the principles. You know, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we've got to be students of the Word. We've got to be feeders of the Word of God. Can you say amen? But we cannot get so caught up with, you know, uh, you know the Bible says this, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Amen? If we simply study and study and study for knowledge and don't have the anointing of the Holy Ghost and what we're doing, the teacher of the church, the great and mighty paraclete, amen, who's working in us and bringing revelation out of that, an anointed revelation out of the Word of God, we become wordy. Hello? The Bible could just become another, you know, book of, you know, writings and teachings, you know, and, you know, some people say, well, I'm a Christian because I've adopted the teachings of Christ. I'm not a Christian because I'm a te I've adopted the teachings of Christ. I'm a born-again believer because I have accepted the living Word, glory to God. Amen? Hallelujah. The Word of God, I'm not just following the teachings of Christ. I'm born of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I've experienced a new birth. Glory to God. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. And His Word now is a living thing. It's a sharp two-edged sword. It's alive. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? It's alive in me. Praise God. And when the Word of faith in my mouth, glory to God, I live by faith. And I conquer and I overcome. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is on the inside of us. And we cannot forget the work of the Spirit, that transforming power of the Spirit of God in our life. We can't get so caught up, you know, trying to be cool. Hello? Want to be uptown? Now, see, I grew up classical Pentecostal. Now, we were back in those days, we were called holy rollers. Because they believed that we rolled out the front door of the church, down the steps, and, you know, we, we rolled under the pews and done a few of those things. Jumped over the pews, done that a few times. Hung, I've never hung from the chandeliers. Hallelujah. In the last building we were in, we had hanging, you know, fluorescent strip lights hung from in. We would just pull those right out of the ceiling. So that's probably a good thing not to hang from the chandeliers. Amen. Back in the early days of Pentecost, they would, they would tar and feather them, run them out of town. You know? There was a price paid for the early Pentecostals. But Daddy Seymour uh, came in, you know, to Azusa Street in the late, uh, early, early, early 1900s and prophesied and said that about 100 years from that point there'd be another revival similar to the Azusa Street revival. We're in that 100 year time frame. Hallelujah. That, that was a three year revival. People came, listen, they didn't come by plane. They didn't, they didn't have the way to get there in less than 24 hours. They would leave Europe by, by ship and cross the Atlantic, and then take trains all the way across the continent 
just to get that meeting and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it started, and it started, I mean, I mean, you think, begin to think of Azusa Street and the healing of, and, the, and the, the Pentecostal revivals that came out of that. And when you got the Church of God in Christ and the Assemblies of God, the Pentecostal holiness and the Church of God uh, and all those, you know, four square, all those Pentecostal denominations that came out. Then the great healing revival that came and the great charismatic renewal came. Then the teaching revival that followed after all that. I'm telling you, and all those things were, were predicated upon the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the church and people being filled with the Spirit, recognize the importance of the Spirit of God. Can you say amen? That didn't all just happen in, in, in 1910, whatever around that time frame was. I mean, you go back and study Alexander, John Alexander Dowry's uh, teaching. In 1875, he had a healing revival break out in Australia. He in the middle of the bubonic plague in his church. Forty people in his church had, had been buried. Five more were about to die. And he went to the Lord and said, my whole congregation is going to die. And God began to reveal him divine healing. And he began to have a healing revival. And over the next 17 years, nobody else in his church died. Nobody except old people who were ready to go home and be with the Lord. And he came to America and, you know, brought in and, and, and the newspapers in San Francisco and across the nation said, Healer comes to America in 1895. Healer comes to America. God's always at work. But I'm telling you, when you, we, we cannot relinquish and we cannot forget the power of the Holy Ghost in our life. We can't get so caught up coming to church and having a light show and a fog show and a you know a, a disco ball in the ceiling, you know, and calling that worship, you know, and having the preacher give up, get up and give a ten minute encouraging word so that everybody can go home and feel like they just had a great church service. We must walk in the power and demonstration of the spirit. Because it's not by might, as one translation says, not by might, not by armies, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It is the power of the Holy Ghost working in us that empowers the church. Jesus told the disciples when he got ready to be a set to ascend into heaven he said go into jerusalem and tarry there until you be endued with power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth don't you do anything don't you go anywhere don't you do a thing until you get empowered by the holy ghost amen and then when they went out, they went out doing just like Jesus. Healing the sick, casting out devils, raising the dead. Glory to God. I'm telling you, they that turned the world upside down have come hither, they said. Hallelujah. And it got so much that, that, that over in Antioch, he said they said this, and they, and they were first called Christians at Antioch. Why? They so represented and so acted like Jesus. Glory to God. They said they are Christ-like, little Christ, little anointed ones. The word Christ, Christian, actually means Christ-like are little Christs. Possess it. That's what it means. It doesn't mean you go to a church. It, it, the, not, not, not initially, it meant they act so much like him, they look so much like him, they carry on so much like the one they're preaching about, they're like him. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't want to have the state of the church be that when Jesus walked in, he wouldn't recognize himself in the church. Buddy Harris said one time, he said, he was preaching, and that's Brother Hagin's you know, son in law, Brother Buddy's going to do the Lord. But he said, I just felt a sinking feeling right there. The Lord just kind of shoosh. Jesus ought to be able to come in and recognize his body. Going around about their villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, hitting all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Glory to God. Can you say amen? I said so much so that people come to touch the hem of his garment and be made whole. That people come to us and recognize that there is something the church has they can't find anywhere else. They're not, they're not just looking for a cool... Listen, I am going to tell you something. This rock and roll performance stuff is going to come to an end because people are still... They're not looking to be entertained. Until they think they are. But what they're looking for is an encounter with God. They're looking for the anointing of God that destroys yokes and removes burdens out of their life. I don't care if you've got a rock show Christian performance going on, if you've got the anointing. And when you get done at the end of the day, they've encountered God in the anointing and the Word of God has set them free. But if all they do is they come and they lead the way they came, and they haven't encountered the transforming power of the Holy Ghost on their life, being touched by God in such a super, not an emotional God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. We have to come into contact with God in such a way. 
Think about the disciples. Think about them. You got them in the first scripture. Zechariah was added before church this morning. This is warming up. I'm just warming up. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The disciples, glory to God. Hallelujah. Through left all their livelihoods. Think about it. Fishermen turned in the nets. Matthew turned in all of his underhanded tax collecting. Don't you know? That took a work of God. How many times do you think he ripped Peter off? He's a tax collector. Are you here? He probably come down to the boats in the morning and say, Well, that's about that's that's one and a half tons of fish. You owe so many I mean, he's a tax collector. Peter's a fisherman. He's probably hiding the fish. Here comes Levi. Hide the fish. And all of a sudden, there's a, such a transformation. They're on the same ministry team together. Are you here? James and John's not the sons of Zebedee. Do you know what that meant? Zebedee means thunder. They were the sons of thunder. They weren't weenies. Are you here? I mean, they weren't walking around going, well, we're just little fish and then da da da. They were weenies. They weren't weenies. They were men. Burly old. I mean, so much so that when, Jesus, when Peter denied Jesus, he cussed. Remember that speech for Tracy? He blankety blank, 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 blank. I'm not one of them. And that's the way Peter talked before the Lord showed up. Are you here? And they had such an encounter with Christ, they left everything. And, they came. and, and, and after the resurrection, and after they're out preaching, and they're brought in to be, to, to, um, to be tried for preaching in the name of Jesus, and they have the counsel, and the, the Bible says this, and they took note of them. They've been with Jesus. Their lives were so... Peter preached sermons. You know? This old guy who was a fish, grumpy old fisherman walked around with his foot in his mouth most of the time. Cut the guy's ear off. Remember? I mean, they come take Jesus. Peter's like, whacking ears off. And Jesus is going, Peter, go get the ear. Bring it to me. Slapped it back on the guy and healed him. That probably freaked him out. Hello? Peter's sitting there going. I love it. But I pray for thee after thou art converted, you'll strengthen the brethren. Peter the denier. Peter the ear cutter offer. Peter old foot in his mouth guy. On the day of Pentecost, stumbled out of that upper room and preached in front of thousands of people. Hallelujah. Without any shame, without any fear. Hallelujah. And the beginning of the things of God in the earth by the outpouring of the Holy Ghost had begun. The church was birthed in power. The church is sustained in power. And the church shall depart in power. Can you say amen? And it's not going to be by the might of might man. It's not going to be by human reasonings. Go in all the world and preach the gospel, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And the Bible says, and they went everywhere, preaching the word, the Lord confirming the word with signs following. We have to understand that God wants the Holy Ghost. But if people only believe, that, listen, listen, He's always used miracles to get people's attention. He's always used signs and wonders to get people's attention. Are you here? You go home. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. The people gave heed to him, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. They started bringing out all the stuff in the middle of the city and, and had them a big bonfire. They were getting healed, delivered, so much so that the old sorcerer came and said, I offer them money. Give me the power you got. Back in the hands of people and get them filled with the Holy Ghost. And it didn't go real good for him. He got reproved and rebuked over that. Peter said, Thy money perish with thee, for thou hast seen a lot in the part in this matter. 
And that word matter is, is, is uh, it means matter of utterance. Amen. Matter of utterance. They were speaking in tongues. There was power of God in demonstration. Hallelujah. The one who faked them out with sorceries realized what he had wasn't real. People were giving the lame were walking, you know. They were bringing all their crutches and all their structures and, and they were getting healed, rising and walking away. Brother Hagin tells a story about um, he had gone to a church and prayed for a man who had been in a wheelchair for seven years. He was, he was in a full gospel church and this guy was at the Baptist church. He came over to the meeting, got healed, walked out of his wheelchair. They said, he said, he sat in the wheelchair and got a guy pushed him around the church. Well, the next day that guy was downtown walking, his pastor saw him. Amen? And when he saw his pastor, he came running down and says, Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. He said, I went over to that full gospel church. A guy who used to be a Baptist preacher was over there. He laid hands on me and Jesus raised me up and healed me. That, that pastor was at that church the next night. Yeah, I was sitting on the platform. And when Brother Hagin came out and got on the platform, he said, now, I, I've already got up before this church because he was in the back room waiting. And said, I've, repent, I've repented to this whole church because I said some unkind things about you people. He said this. He said, but, he said, that man that you lay hands on last night, he was healed. He said, he goes to my church. I know for fact he's been in that wheelchair for seven years. Now, can I borrow your notes? Because this Sunday morning, I'm going to preach from your notes. I know it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a guideline. He said, but I've already heard the sermon. And I got to know if you heard that had, you know, real wheels or whatever. He, he said, he said, I've heard it. I'm, I, I can put the meat on the bones. He said, that this Sunday, I'm going to get up. I'm going to preach that sermon on Jesus, the double cure. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, he's our Savior. He's our healer. He said, and when I get done, I'm going to call him up like he did. I'm going to lay hands on him and get him and lay hands on him and be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the first Baptist church of that city. Hallelujah. See, when, see, when we see the power of God, it's, it calls, it summons people. Amen. To the goodness of God. So what am I saying? We don't need to forget about that. You know, we're not just talking about our heritage. We're not talking about where we came from. We're talking about where we're supposed to be living. We're supposed to be living in the power of the Spirit. Glory to God. You can't go, well, I'm a word of faith. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a charismatic. And then kind of go and do like, you know, listen, I grew up Pentecostal. I'm going to be honest with you. About a second or third time around, they had just become a Pentecostal church in name only. Hello? Some of the old saints might speak in tongues occasionally. Grandmama, you know, she'd have to get all worked up and get this all saints. She might let out a few words in tongues. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We don't, we're not going to go through this one, but I get to go through and show you from the book of Acts that when they got filled, they spoke in tongues. Amen. Well, that passed away the day the last apostle died. Find that in Scripture. I know you, can, you can't use 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and tell me that all the miracle signs and wonders have passed away. When that, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. You know? When that which is in part is uh, uh, when that which is in part um, when that which is full comes, that which is in part should be done away with. And they say that in the miracles and all that. But, and they said the fullness was the canonicity of Scripture. Let me ask you something: Do you know Him just like He knows you? No, and I can prove it to you from First John, because John says, "When He shall appear, we shall be as He is, or we shall see Him as He is." We don't fully know the Lord like He fully knows us. Paul said, when that which is perfect is come, we will know even as we are known. We're not there. So you can't use that to say the, can, the canon of Scripture is, is would that happen at that council in whatever, 400 A.D. or whenever that, or the last apostle, when John the apostle died, all, everything stopped. The church needs the power of God just as much today as it ever needed it. If Jesus used signs, wonders, and miracles, if the first, uh, uh, the, the twelve apostles of the Lamb used signs, wonders, and miracles, if those that came after them had signs, wonders, and miracles that, that proclaimed the resurrection and the power of God, then the church today needs signs, wonders, and miracles. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist said that there's one comes after me who's mightier than I, because I baptize you indeed with water and to repentance, but there is one who's coming after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, glory to God. Can you say amen? 
It is that Holy Ghost and fire baptism that keeps the church alive, keeps it on, keeps it burning, glory to God, so that we're not wet wood. Anybody ever tried to light wet wood? You better have some dry wood if you're going to have some wet wood lit. Because you're going to have enough heat to dry it out so it'll burn. Amen. And then all you, if you don't, all you get is smoky. You can put some, you can put a fire starter down there. You can throw lighter fluid on it. You can throw gas on it. It's not smart. But anyway, I know this by experience. Brother Hagin said he learned, he learned things either by experience or by, by the Lord teaching him. You know, by experience and by the word. And he, you know, the word's always better. When somebody's done something, you've done it by experience, you just need to follow him. One time I was working at a mobile home company right after I got saved before I went to Ramah. And uh, the, the owner wanted me to go burn a bunch of stuff. I it was on the other side of a privacy fence at the back of the mobile home lot. It was so mobile homes. I, I, I would set up mobile. We'd go out and set them up. You know, block them and put the sewer on them and all that stuff. You know, put the double wides together. You know, block one, take the wheels off, crank the other one to it, and then, you know, jack it up and all this stuff. We did all that stuff. But he had a bunch of materials around the lot and wanted to burn. So I took it on the other side of that fence and poured about five gallons of, of uh, fuel on it. I thought, well, I'm, I'm, I'm smart. I'm going to go on the other side. Light something and throw it over the privacy fence. Gaps about this big. Like flamethrowers. I think we're woo! And flames came through those cracks in the fence. The fence. <laughs> Moral to the story. Don't try it. Yeah, I had my mini nuclear explosion over there. You think I would have learned because when I was young, about 14 or 15, I was, we had charcoals and they had gone out and I was going, pour, you know, we used to do this all the time. You pour gas in a Coke bottle, a Pepsi bottle. Now, down east, most of the time was Pepsi. Pepsi started in New Bern. And Green was about 40 miles from New Bern. And so, you know, we, we drank Pepsi. We didn't drink Coke. Coke was, was, you know, like a communist drink. Okay? Pepsi Cola. We drank Pepsi Cola. All right? Pour it in there, and you, you take it like that. Well, I, I threw it on there, and it thing, that flame came back on that gas. I threw it up and dropped it on a concrete patio with the oil, the oil vents in, or coming up out of the concrete. That, let's see, hits the ground. What happens to gasoline? The concrete's on fire. There's all that gas there, and I'm just jumping up and down. It's all around the vent stack of the oil tank that's underground. It took me twice to learn not to do stupid stuff. There was not an event three. Nor will there ever be. Okay. Yeah, that was I had you covered there, man, because that was stupid. We can learn. We can learn by experience or we can learn from others. And one of the things we've learned is if we don't stay in the fire. Over time, we'll just become wet, smoky wood. And we will be talking about our old days. We'll talk about how it was back in 1982. Glory to God. We'll talk about being at Camp Meeting 25. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here? You can go back and talk about Classroom at Raymond when Dad's teaching Faith Library 1, Faith Library 2. We talk about winter, we didn't winter Bible, it was prayer, seminar, Holy Spirit, Holy Prayer, Holy Spirit. Prayer seminar 1981. Went three weeks. Nowski, the, the, the Nowski, uh, one of the Nowski's was still in the plane crash. Brother Hagin said, you think y'all did? Yeah, I got to get back. You sure? Yeah, I got to get back. They thought they were killed in the plane crash. There's a lot of morals there. One, you know, listen. Don't override stuff. Don't override. Well, how come God let that happen? You can override. Sister Wilkerson, Jean Wilkerson, one of the people that that Brother Hagin said, was one of the few people that ever was accurate about his ministry. Came through the congregation one night. We were sitting there, and uh, she's in the spirit. Now, Jean Wilkerson is who Billy Brim sat in. You ever heard Billy Brim go, Hand of glory! She got that to be around Sister Wilkerson all the time. That's how Sister Wilkerson taught. She would minister that way. She would begin to, and she'd be speaking in tongues, and she'd say, and da, da, go, what is this? She'd speak in tongues, and she'd just come. And she was just, 
she would start speaking. Somebody walked with, when people walk with God in those veins, I mean, they can open their mouth and, 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 and the, the hair on the back of your neck will stand up. Out of here. You just, you recognize they walk with God. The power of God comes into that. And that night, she, she saw an angel riding through the, through, the, through the congregation, through the student body, and, uh, and it had a joust. And she said, what are you doing? He said, I'm inspecting the troops. So I said, there's some rusty sorts here, but they'll get them straightened out before the end of the year. And then that angel and the horse rode up on the platform and leaned over and had, handed in the spirit Brother Hagen a set of glasses. And said, from this day forward, you'll begin to see and have revelation for the word of God than you've ever had before. And he got up about three weeks later in, in one of our mornings sharing praise services and said, he said, I've seen more in the past two weeks from the Word of God that I've seen in, in years. He said, it's just things are, I'm seeing things in the Spirit that I've never seen before. He said, glory to God. This is to a tape one time from, from one of the Raymond tapes from a meeting that I wasn't there for, but she was prophesying again to talk about the, the, the presence of God. She said, atmosphere calls you. Whether for good or for atmosphere Church, we need to set the atmosphere that summons the presence of God, signs, wonders, and miracles, and set the captives free. Men and women are being deceived. There is a spirit of deception in the earth. It's gotten now that people don't even know who they are. They don't know if they're a boy or a girl. And they're so mixed up they can't even call them he or she. you got to call them Z or we. They don't know what they are. It is, a it is a damnable, demonic spirit from the pit of hell that has been loosed when the Supreme Court legalized a homosexual marriage. That thing was released on our nation. It was already out there, but it was released and covered with authority from this nation to work. And it's just it's demons in operation. All of a sudden, 13 and 14 year olds and parents are taking five year olds and six year olds and having them gender reassigned. The parents, now they do need to be reassigned, but that's child abuse. And then we're talking about demonic spirits and manifestation, and the church sits back and, and sits around and goes, Should we accept gay marriage or not? If you're in the power of the spirit, you wouldn't have a question about it. You would know. I said you would know. And the power of God would set the captives free and deliver them and bring them out of bondage and captivity. Oh, you religious zealots or butcher. No, 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 no. You're full of the devil because the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. I said it's earthly, sensual, and devilish because the church hasn't been walking in power. Then we acquiesce to the, to the mind of the world. Because remember what the Bible says? Who hath known the ways of God? I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has any into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And he goes on and says this, but we have the mind of what? Christ. It is that supernatural spirit mind from the Holy Ghost that brings revelation and understanding in the realm of the spirit. You were birthed in the fire. If we're going to continue and consummate and fulfill, we're going to have to continue in the fire. We're not going to burn out. We're throwing more, more wood on. We're throwing more fuel to the fire. Amen? Now let me say something. We see stuff in America. America has become complacent. And America has become lethargic in many, many, many places. But you go to other countries and, and, and they're on fire for God. I am telling you, there are things happening in South America through the Raymond churches and other churches where the power of God is just taking place in, in, in Colombia and uh, in Brazil and different places in South America. There is such a revival going on. It just absolutely will astound you what God's doing. And I'm not talking about gold dust. Okay? Satan will rise up and bring false and lying wonders when, whenever the church starts doing its job. And the ladies remember they're having gold dust. People getting up, you know, had gold dust and it's supposed to, and I thought, well, don't, don't, don't bother taking it off. Just have I bring their gold dust up. 
Take that, get your get your, you can support your ministry off the gold dust that appears. Yeah, bring me in if, if it's really gold. Yeah. Yeah, you, you won't need an offering. Do that in every church, you won't need an offering. That would never be. But Satan will always come with lying signs and warnings, just like the, the, the oil in the hands and the bleeding palms and the feathers from heaven and all that stuff that was out 20, 25 years ago. Proved it was fake. And somebody went in with slow motion cameras. They had, had high end video cameras in their church. Took cameras in, filmed it, and found it, that, that stuff with all the woman's sleeves. She's throwing it out. And everybody was just throwing money out there. Because false signs, false wonders, false things. To try to sway people away from the real. But there is a church. And I'm not saying we're not the only one. Because I'm going to tell you, anytime you start thinking you're the only one, you're wrong. Because God stopped saying, reserved unto myself. And the prophet came and whined and bawled and squalled. Elijah came and bind and bawled and squalled about being the only one. I have reserved unto myself 7,000, not Baal, but need to Baal. How can you be out one day killing off the 450 prophets single-handedly and then whining the next? You'll be in the only one because some little harlot said, I'm going to, at this time tomorrow, I'm going to make you as one of them. Hello? Just get some David in you, pal. Are you here? Get your five stones, not so you can miss four times, so you can get the four brothers of Goliath. Amen. Now, don't do what David did. Quit after the first one. He said he was supposed to go take out all five giants. He talked about something. Pursued them and take all five of them down. And it took him the rest of his life to get the other four. In his old age, the last one was killed. And he was supposed to get them on that one day. Hello. Why did he pick up five? Because there's five giants. Even one of them was like the guy in The Princess Bride. Six finger giant. How many have ever seen The Princess Bride? Okay. How many have never seen it? All right. You're all right. It's okay. For the first 20 times I saw it, I said it's the stupidest movie ever filmed. I finally, I finally grew on me after a while. But anyway, now I quote it. I'm like, oh my goodness. You are the brute squad. Anyway, church, we are in an hour that must rise up. We cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We cannot sit back and wish we had power when we've got the power. And not just Unimus, but exosia. We have the authority to win. We have the Holy Ghost. He's come on us. And He's equipped us. And He's given us words of life, glory to God. And we think, and everybody's running around trying to get enough numbers in their churches, you know, to acquiesce to, to whatever is the new narrative in the church to get people in there so we can feel successful. Jesus never told us to go out and be successful. He told us to go out and preach the gospel. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It's not about drawing them unto your ministry, unto your, your church, unto your whatever. It's about drawing them unto Jesus. Because there is where they are. They encounter the transformative power of God that radically, supernaturally, completely changes them into another man or woman. Because therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. New species of being that never existed before. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. No, I have not gotten to the first scripture yet. Ain't going to either. Glad I brought them. Hallelujah. Good to have it there. You know, that's good. Those are good, those are good scriptures. Heard Dad Hagen say one time, he still has his Mother's Day sermon that he never preached. He said it was a humdinger, a stem winder. I had it all ready and never got to preach it. So the next year I pulled it out and never got to preach it. I think he finally just gave up trying to preach it because he never got to preach it. Stayed, had it all ready, never got to preach that Mother's Day sermon. Glory to God. Well, you know, I understand. I'm not, I'm not a theme preacher. You know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Easter. You know, I, 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 I struggle to come up with a sermon for those dates. You got to because people are coming expecting something. They're going to come get the anointing. 
Amen? Because that's what's going to help them. Not make them feel sad or cry about mama or grandmama. You know? And everybody can sit there and tell them how wonderful mama is. Moms are great. We love moms. But you know what? I said, you know what? You know what? Jesus is the answer for the world today. Jesus is who we're going to be sold out to. Mama can be a, 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 is a great part of your life. But let me tell you something. She won't take you to heaven. God don't have grandkids. Amen. Are you here? God don't have any grandkids or great grandkids. Nieces or nephews. We are sons of God. We all come into the kingdom on our own. And grandma can't get you in. And mama can't get you in. We come. And we need the Lord. And so we need people in contact with anyone. So I'm, I'm challenging this morning. Beloved, as the Apostle Jude said, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Charge like a battery. Build up the inner man. Hallelujah. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. But be ye being filled, I'm just quoting it as the Greek says, but be ye being filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries to God. That word mysteries in the Greek means divine secrets. We come into communion with the Father of Spirits, Spirit to Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost. We're in divine communion. He charges us. Why do you think Jesus went and prayed alone all night long several numerous times? Well, he's the Son of God. Yep. He still had the Holy Ghost come on him for ministry. Because according to Philippians, he laid aside his rights to deity and the glory and walked among us as a man. He didn't stop being God as he walked among us. He laid aside the right to use that. He walked as a man under the Old Testament covenant, anointed by the Holy Ghost. Even so much so, the Bible says, the one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean he wasn't divine. We will, we will never try to, in any way, shape, or form, deny the deity of Christ or lessen his deity. He stripped himself of the rights. Kind of like those movies where the prince or the king you know, takes off the robes and he dresses as a commoner and goes out among the people. Jesus stripped himself of his rights to deity because his ministry couldn't be deity doing it. Why? Because he said, the works that I do, ye shall do in greater than these because I go to the Father. He did it as God, the second person of the Godhead. We can't do it. Because there's only one second person of the Godhead. Now we're heirs of God, and we're joint heirs with Christ, but we're not the second person of the Godhead. My relationship with him is, if you may be in Christ, I'm standing with the Father because I'm in Christ. Outside of that, I don't have it. So Jesus stripped himself and walked as a man under the covenant. And the works, the signs and miracles he did were under the covenant of God as a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. So much so, he came to the river to be baptized. John said, I need to be baptized with thee. He said, do this because it must fulfill righteousness. And then the, the John said, he saw heaven open up and a, the, a, the Holy Spirit descended on him in the bodily form such as a dove. And the voice of God said, this is my beloved son. And I'm well pleased. I know you may have seen the, the Shroud of Turin movie back the Mormons put out back in the 70s, how Jesus was 12 years old and left and went and traveled with caravans and made clay pigeons and they became alive and all this stuff. <laughs> Gag a maggot. How do you say that? Because when he went to Cana of Galilee and turned the water into wine, and the word wine can be translated grape juice or wine, fermented or unfermented, totally depending on the context. And I was recently talking to a, another minister who had been in Europe traveling and was talking to winemakers. And they made this statement to him. He said, the best wine, the best tasting, is the moment right before it ferments. When they drew out the best, they drew it out, Jesus met right before it ferments, they got the best. Right? 
Yeah. That mess up people. All these, I want to drink wine, put on your website, we drink wine. Listen, folks, you do what you want to. I'm going to ruin my testimony. I'm ministering to an alcoholic, and I don't want him looking at me going, so how much do you drink a week? Or get him saved, get him delivered from alcohol, and go out to, go out to the restaurant and see me in there with my Chardonnay. And him think, he, well, I can do that. If the pastor can do it, I can do it. Uh-huh. I said, uh-huh. He's back right where he started from. Well, let no liberty be a stumbling block to another person. Okay, what you say? People are more interested in telling why they can drink wine instead of providing them with the new wine of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, that song, you sing that song back at Rhema? Uh, keep more came up and start singing. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Amen. I'm telling you. I tell you, you get, you get filled up with God, you don't need wine. Hello? You don't need all that. You, I'm telling you, you get filled up with God and say filled up with God. You don't need to be relaxed with your daily. Well, there has, it has a good physical property. It's proven that red grape juice has just as much and or more benefits than red wine because it doesn't have the alcohol, but it has all the antioxidants and all the other benefits to it. Just the people who want to drink wine say that it has good benefits. Well, anyway. Back to the story. Jesus turned the water into wine. Was this, this is the beginning of the miracles when he came out of Canaan into Galilee. He didn't make no, no, no clay pigeons to turn into real pigeons. As a matter of fact, nowhere in the ministry of Jesus do you see anything like that taking place. He didn't take any objects to make them live. Hello? The miracles... I'm running late today. I'm trying to wrap it up. You kind of get in the flow with the Holy Ghost and it starts coming out of there. And you just, you, you, how do you unhook? The miracles which Jesus wrought, go study it, were need-based. The needs of the people were met. He didn't do stuff just because it was cool. Hello? Walking on water was not because it was cool, it was necessary. Because he took ships all the times. Hello? That particular time, he had to send them on ahead. He had to take care of something. We don't know what it was. He had to take care of something. And he came tonight walking on water. It was only because it was necessary. It wasn't, he wasn't doing that just because he, be, he could be cool. When the sick were healed, it wasn't to be cool. It was because they had a need. When the water was turned into wine, there was a need. When the dead were raised, there was a need. Hello? When the, when the woman's son was raised from the dead, there was a need. He was a young child, a young, a young man. Lazarus was raised up. There was a need. You know there were other funerals that didn't get raised up. But there was need. The ministry of Jesus was met the needs of the people. Miracles were wrought to meet the need. And the church should be walking in power and that same anointing and that same power, meeting needs, not trying to show off. Do we have answers? Do we have glorious answers? There are so many prayer calls. Our, our ministry, obviously. And I don't say this to brag on me. It's not me. Without the Holy Ghost, I'm going to tell you something. There's times I've prayed for prayer calls and I thought, oh my God, uh, I hope they get it. Not the prayer call, whatever they need. And I felt like a wet dish rag left on the sink for a Did my battery just... Uh, there we go. Okay. All right, I just heard it go down. All right. Felt like a wet dish rag left on the sink for a couple of days. Smelly and cold. And come back with testimony. Well, so he said that to so-and-so and they were healed. Well, it wasn't me. I said, it, it obviously wasn't me. You can pray with all the fervor you want, but if it's not the anointing of God, you can sound like you just called, you know, bulldoze all the mountains on the planet with your fervor. It's the anointing. I've ministered to people and felt about as spiritual as a rock out in the middle of the desert. I'm telling you, like Brother Hagee used to say, if, if I went by feelings, I'd have the church praying for me. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I'd have, I'd have to call the elders in the church and have them come pray for me because I went by feelings. I don't feel anything. We're not called to go by feelings. We're tra- called to live by faith, trust the power of God working in us. Now, I love it when feelings get involved, but you've got to be able to take your understand. It's not about the feeling. Amen? It's about trusting God and, and, and understanding the power of the Holy Ghost working in us and through us. That song, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. But I, we, we, we kind of changed it. We got to change that song. I love you know, it. So much about that song was great. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, yes. I. I'm like, it's so good except I walk by faith and not by sight and not move by feelings. So I said, okay, guys, let's try this one. I've got assurance. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, I've got assurance. Yeah. Why? Because my assurance is faith in God. So that worked better for me. Well, that's, that's a cool song. Yeah, I wanted to change it. I had to get, had to get it uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some songs you guys got to get saved. Others you got to get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some of them need to go to a charismatic Word of Faith revival for a week. Get some rewrite done in them. Praise God. I challenge you, church. Let's once again stir up the gift within. Let's get where we understand the, the working of the Holy Ghost in our life. That we speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. That we once again recognize that He who built up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. They were so supercharged by the presence of God that when we meet people, we have answers for them. You may not feel it. What if I want you to be? Be instant in season and out of season. Can, you kind of, can I kind of paraphrase that a little bit for what I'm saying right now? Be, be ready. Whether you feel like it or not. Feeling it. I'm telling you, we, we love to talk about being on one of our... Uh, Head ushers back in our old church used to say he felt the ointment. I feel the ointment. Yeah. Bless your, bless your brother, son. And I felt I feel the ointment tonight. Glory to God. I love to feel the presence of God. But we need to come to a place of maturity that we recognize his presence whether we feel it or not. And are aware that he walks through us, whether we feel it or not. Whether you've got a a 50,000 volt charge coming out of your hand or not. We're trusting the work of the Holy Ghost. We're obedient to God. Hello. I said, hello. And become aware of his presence. And stay in His presence. And stay equipped by His presence. To do His will and His work in the earth. Can you say amen? There's a lot to do. We cannot let America go down the tube. While Africa, South America, and China have revivals. Bad terror. After the Iron Curtain fell. We had a meeting where he was at. And said, God, God kicked the Iron Curtain down and then the Bamboo Curtain's next. Now, you don't think anything's going on in China. We, we know a minister who got in there. I'm going to close with this. Okay, God, God does stuff. We talk about they're going to Cuba, the minister. So we've got some, a, a missionary I know. So they went to Cuba. They think we're bringing, we're bringing the gospel to these people. Find out there's been revival going on underground. They got there and they found a church alive with God, on fire with the Holy Ghost. How many of you ever heard of the former Soviet Union? Well, Estonia, the northernmost of the Baltic states, was part of the Soviet Union and the Soviet occupation. And, and when the last time I was there, we got to talk to a guy um, who, who ran the radio station there, Christian radio station. And he began to talk about Paul and revival. We never heard about it in the West. Why? Because the Soviet Union controlled all the media. But at the Church of the Holy Spirit, yeah, that's what it's called, in, in, in the old city of Tallinn, now Tallinn's an old medieval city, uh, parts of the, of the walls and the turrets, uh, a large portion of that, that wall that's surrounded is a walled city with old cannon turrets and watch, watchtower turrets, 
a, a lot of that still remains. They're made out of stone. I mean, it, beautiful. The old town is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just, just one of the best preserved old, old cities in the in, of medieval times in the world. And uh, but again, and down in the downtown tower, down in the old part of the town, is the Church of the Holy Spirit, the Baptist Church. Okay, but back in the back in the late seventies, early eighties, they had a revival. And people got letters and papers from all over the Soviet Union to come to Poland. And the basement was full of wheelchairs and stretchers and crutches and all kinds of things because they had a healing revival going on. We never heard about it out here. But it was going on. You can't keep God out. I said, you can't keep God out. You think iron or bamboo is going to keep God out? You think a, a communist socialist system is going to keep God out? You can take all the, all, I went to the, the, the uh, Russian Orthodox Church, Eastern Orthodox Church in Thailand, right after communism fell, and all the artwork and everything had been put in the basement. And all the priests were run by the government. They, they, they were government agents and you know, government whatever. And everything that, that represented Christ was put in the basement and hidden. And that, the second, third time I went, it had all been brought out and they had destroyed that gorgeous church, gorgeous cathedral. I mean, just uh, that, that old Orthodox style, you know. And, um, but then he brought it all back out of the basement. But in this old church, he said, yeah, people were coming from all over the Soviet Union to Tallinn to the healing revival and getting healed. Do you think for a second that you can set up a government that can keep God from doing what he wants to do? You find, he finds hungry people. He's, he's showing up. He finds people calling him. Cuba's had the same thing happen there. Okay? Now, Dad said the bamboo curtain is next. And we put this next. Yeah. Glory to God. I, I know somebody who's, who's gone in there, the preacher. They caught him in, and he, they went in to teach leadership to all their companies. He said, fine. He said, now look, our, our, our leadership meeting compre uh, or comprised of taking all the leaders and teaching them once a week. And then they go back and teach all their all their, their employees. See, the, uh, the, so the Chinese have become... Uh, Communist capitalist. I know this would have an oxymoron, but they're using the, the techniques of capitalism to the world to generate money, and using communism to control people to, to produce all this stuff. Okay? They said, "Look, you know, we we want to take, we're going to come in, and we'll come in, we'll do leadership teachers, we bring the whole team in." Now, listen, he said, "Okay, you know, look, we use the Bible as our as our leadership manual." They said, "Okay." Then they said, "We need to get Bibles printed for all the companies that we're going in and doing this." In. Okay. So in Chinese presses, they're pre printing in Chinese the Bible. They're going in and they bring all the leadership in for the whole company every week and they have a Bible study. And then those guys go out to all their departments and have a Bible study with all their people. What do you think is going to happen after a period of time? You think for a second the devil, the devil can stop God from moving when there's hungry people and who are full of the Holy Ghost and faith who will do what God said to do? No. No way. I said, no way. In America, God has not forgotten America. And we need to rise up and make sure that we're right, right in the middle of all this going on in the earth. And you say, amen. Father, we thank you for our time together. We bless the people. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost at work in our lives, in the church, in our local church, in churches in America, and church all over the world. That the outpouring of the Spirit is alive and well, and people are fervent with the power of God in Jesus' name. Let us be used as never before. Let us be aware of the, the presence of God to minister life, to go into the world and preach the gospel and have signs and wonders follow us. And bring them, compel them into the house of God. Bring them into the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.